The cloud is confusing. Whether you're in AWS, Amazon Web Services, or GCP, the Google Cloud Platform, or Microsoft Azure, there are just so many settings that you can tweak, tune, and configure. Especially in terms of security, sometimes it's really easy to totally lose track of your identities and your cloud security posture. So let me say up front, this is a full featured sponsored video for my good friends over at Sunrise Security. But seriously, honestly, if you'll take a look, I genuinely think they have something awesome here. You can protect your entire cloud infrastructure, the whole cloud ecosystem with whatever hosting provider you might be using with literally one click. Sunrise Security brings to light the first cloud permissions firewall. And I know you might think that's a bit of an odd name, but it really is tightening things up, locking things down and making sure the security layers are in place for the principle of least privilege. It's one click least privilege with zero disruption disruption to business operations, DevOps, all the sweet stuff that's necessary to get the job done in a cloud environment. I want to show you it in action, but it is really an easy button to make sure your cloud environment is as secure as it can be. The whole thing is super streamlined, so you don't have to care about all the thousands of different cloud security settings. It abstracts those all away, just to the ones that really matter. And you can easily approve, deny, and set whatever you'd like, all within Slack, so it never interrupts interrupts your workflow. Anyway, let's dive into the demo. If you'd like to check it out, you can take a look at my link below in the video description, but I'm going to hop over to the login button on the top right and then enter my credentials to get in to the Sunrise Security platform. I do really appreciate it requires multi-factor authentication, so we've already got the right approach to security here. Now we're getting in to the Sunrise Security platform, and there's a whole lot here. It's awesome. There's a lot to dig into, but ultimately we can start at the top where you could toggle in and switch to whatever organizations that you might have managed and hey, help configured with Sunrise. We could toggle, oh, maybe AWS or GCP or Azure if you'd like, but they were generous enough to set me up with a tenant environment, little playground and sandbox for us to kick the tires and see this thing in action. Let me zoom in here so you can see a little bit better, but I could just as easily go up to that top navigation and then pivot or switch into different organizations that Sunrise can help us manage. I could jump into another org, but I am currently in this AWS test org. Now I could drill down into any specific organizational units or some logic, hey, some capability for further into our cloud environment. But take a look, if I wanted to get granular, we just hop into any of these. But if I wanted that bird's eye view from everything, look, this is a huge cloud environment. Say we've got 4,000 IAM users and roles that all do have excessive permissions and privileges. That's that idea of least privileges, right? Say that user account should not be able to access things that it doesn't need to access. And I don't know if you've ever taken a look at all the possible cloud permissions, but there are tons and tons of them, especially for different services. And we could just kind of keep scrolling here. This is a really cool thing where it shows you, hey, which of these things that you actually use between the accounts, services, and roles in your cloud environment, and which of these do you not use? And we could probably lock the doors and windows here. I could just scroll. You can see my vertical scroll bar on the right-hand side. Look at all these. <laughs> So a little bit of the magic of Sunrise is that we could super duper easily take a look at all of these accounts, all these IAM roles and users and what they might already have access to. Hey, what identities are within different groups? What permissions, what service capabilities do they have? And honestly, do they even need to have these? You can review all this in a quick glance here, but again, if you just wanted that easy button to protect these identities, you just click the button. And this is wild. You're about to protect 4,000 excessively privileged IAM users and roles within this organization. You can review this and hey, take a look if you'd like to make sure these changes are good for you. But if later down the road, these identities need those permissions again in the future, you can use permissions on demand to be able to regain some of that access. That way, on the fly, as needed, you've still got the capability that you need to get the work done. But that's it. Literally just a click. I mean, go protect and we're good. And just like that, we have 100% here. 
better. Heck of a lot better. All of those 4,000 IAM users and roles are now protected. All the identities with sensitive permissions now have those settings locked down, contained, and not needed because they weren't necessary to begin with. If we scroll down to all the things we were looking at previously, you can see a couple green. Hey, not all the red unprotected on the side. There are still a couple because there's more we could do, but I want to show you how granular you can get. At the very least, we have some of this stuff staged. Now, obviously, I was working with broad strokes there. We did that across the entire organization, but if we wanted to drill down, Umbrella Corp, Pharmaceutical, whatever, any of these, we could just click into it and see what's going on in that realm. Say we only had 19 IAM users and roles here, but those are already covered by the top level control that we just had. But if we wanted to drill down, we totally could. Now take a look at these unused services, other things like all down below that we could lock down even further. If we wanted to preview these, just click the button, see all the stuff, all the capabilities, AWS in this example, but it would work just as well for GCP and Azure. Literally kind of don't have to think here. And that's the coolest thing. It is just the easy button. We're not gonna end up using this for the work that we do. Let's disable them. Let's hit disable unused and we're good to go. And look at this, you are protected. Congrats, all identities and services are protected at this scope. Now, if I brought us back up, hey, go through the whole org, Things are looking good? Well, no, we still got some gaps for those other services in different places. Again, we could click all the buttons and make this good. Now, I don't mean to harp on this too much, but look, I'll be the first to admit, cloud stuff sometimes scares me. I said at the start, it's confusing. There is so much out there, but Sunrise has already done all the hard work and legwork to say, look, across these thousands of toggleable switches and configurations, settings, things you could tune and tweak, look, not all of them matter. The ones that do, we we can abstract those, bundle them up, and make the difference where it needs to be made. You might have noticed though, maybe this other card and tile in the display here, what the heck are these zombies? It says, look, at least in this organization, hey, congrats, you don't have any unused identities, but what about the others we could play with? Let me just show you this. Let me uh, pivot over to the other org here. And this gives us a bit more to play with here, right? We could go back and do these same IAM roles and excessive privileges or unused services, but now, we've got a couple zombies. I think this is really cool because zombies are just accounts, users, roles, IAM identities that aren't doing anything. They exist because they were created at some point, some time ago, but it's been literally 90 days of inactivity. It's not doing anything and they're just unused. They're zombies. It's probably worthwhile to limit the attack surface and just prune those, make those go away because literally they aren't in use, but the cloud sprawl has just grown so big that maybe you aren't even tracking. Sunrise helps identify those and then put them away until they're ever needed again with permissions on demand. Here's the thing, again, we can preview these, we can take a look, bird's eye view if we'd like. Oh, maybe a couple capabilities, users that are just not doing anything. And if we could just simply quarantine all zombies with the old button, do it. Now I had mentioned just briefly early on that look, the workflow here doesn't really get in your way because they're oftentimes just Slack messages, just communication back and forth where you could basically chat with Sonrai and have chat ops where look, they'll go ahead and make sure, okay, we'll just give you permission as needed, permissions on demand and toggle things here and there. So at this point, we've covered three things you can do with literally an easy button at Sunrise and streamline your security of your entire cloud ecosystem and infrastructure. You can protect identities like deny access to identities that have sensitive permissions and they don't need it. You can disable any unused services that aren't being used at that scope and below as you drill down to different access levels. And you can quarantine those identities or those zombies that haven't been used for 90 days. And if they wake up or any of those other settings or services that you might happen to Need, if that needs to be back in action, you can use permission on demand with chat ops. And you might have noticed just up at the top here that pending changes in the navigation with however many things we wanted to toggle and tweak, but we could click into that and review everything that's gonna end up being done. Maybe we restrict access to the secrets manager. Hey, change or update the policy here. We could do this for however many things are in the queue, everything that we wanted to tweak here. And you can review these or your admin, anyone else in the chain of the organization here. But say I wanted to delete all changes just for the sake of showcase here, because I wanna show you the real big guns. If I get back to the front page here, notice that we were clicking around. We were using the preview button. Hey, 
day we were staging some of the protections, but the real magic comes from how we could do one click protection. I keep saying easy button, but genuinely, literally, this is it. Everything that we've done, everything that we might showcase could all be done with one single step where we will go ahead and protect all of the excessively privileged identities, quarantine all of the zombie identities, and disable all the unused services and regions with that one button. This is the magic stuff. If I hit protect, it does it all. It does all of these buttons and stages all of those changes. No matter how big or small the cloud environment is, Sunrise got it covered. There it is. You are protected. Congrats. All the identities and services are protected at the scope across the entire humongous ginormous organization. That that is so cool. Oh goodness, the pending changes is like 30,000. <laughs> Man, that really shows you the power there. Let's go ahead and submit all of those changes. Let's do it. And ultimately, that will generate some infrastructure as code or cloud formation that we could go ahead and spin up. It'll create the template for us and we'll put it into action. I've been playing around with this just to see how it looks in the different organizations, but it's super easy. You can review, you can change, you can modify. Ultimately, once it churns out the template, it's ready to download and you could just run with it. Deploy it if you wanted to just get the thing cruising, but if you change your mind and you want to revert back to what you're thinking, that's super easy. Just a click and you're back to it. Now let me show you that idea of the permissions on demand. As you need them, you can just get that capability back in action. We've set this up and I got a little bit of a demo environment where one account is configured with a lot of those cloud protections. So we have protected IAM users and roles. Since I am drilled down to this specific scope, now I could go navigate to even some other things in the navigation here. And I didn't show you these prior, but look, you could drill down to the services, reporting, even pending changes as we saw, but the approvers and requests is where we can get a little bit more of that chat ops like conversation here. Say that I am the IT admin or whatever security crew that needs to be able to make those decisions as to who should be able to do what and approve or deny them as the requests come up. So let me add myself in as an approver. It'll automatically suggest some other users in the org, but let me just add my John at John Hammond account. Let me click that button to add that in and save. Now let me get back to the services and drill right back down to that account. Now, if I were to scroll down to go take a look at these services again, I didn't show you this previously, but we could drill down into any of these that we're interested in. And we'll see, oh, how many of those sensitive permissions might even matter, and who has permissions to do that? Who is exempt from the firewall? Right now, it's just the sandbox account here, and nothing wrong with it, but I'm not in there. I need to be able to try to perform an operation and then see if it'll get approved or denied by the admin. I've added myself in there, for the sake of showcase, we'll see that in action. And to give you the full picture here, I am inside of a Slack workspace where I've got Sunrise set up and we can see the whole thing come to life. With that said, I'm also inside of this AWS or Amazon Web Services organization. And let's say I tried to do something sensitive, like set up a VPC. So let me just search for, oh, VPC. How about that? Let's create some isolated cloud resources. Looking good. Can I just create a VPC? Doesn't matter what any of this is. Like, honestly, I just wanted to showcase case it, we're probably fine with all the defaults. Let's just create a VPC. However, my account is not authorized to do this because of the cloud permissions firewall. Sunrise saving the day. And I didn't even get a chance to take a look at Slack quite yet, but I saw this email come through. Ooh, we've got a permissions on demand request via Sunrise Cloud and the permissions firewall. Take a look. My user account trying to do some shady stuff. Oh, open up that VPC when we didn't need to, but we can determine the principle of least privilege and access here. And if I do take a look back over at Slack, we'll see the message in notification from Sunrise where it says, hey, this IAM user role was just denied access to this capability creating a VPC. Do you want to allow this? Do you want to approve or deny or even add a note? No, you're a hacker. Lol, deny, and we're good. Or in the case of me wanting to create the VPC, then we'll actually allow it. If we were to hop back over into the Sunrise platform, we could take a look at the requests. And of course, there's the entry for my attempt at creating a VPC, doing some sensitive stuff in that cloud ecosystem. We denied this, but we could just as easily allow it. Let me go ahead and click retry just down below in AWS and we'll see if it comes through again. Since we hadn't made any changes yet, I still couldn't create the VPC no matter how many times I tried. 
The security settings were working just as they should. I had denied access to that user, so I needed to go back into Sunrise and add my user identity into the exemptions list. We just slap it in and we're good. With that, back in AWS, now that the permissions have been approved, I could create the VPC just fine. And I can keep cruising uninterrupted, zero disruption to get the work done. If we went to review and revisit, of course, the EC2 sort of service here that we were looking at, we could go take a look at the exemptions and there I am just as well with the permissions as needed. That's pretty slick. I gotta say, I think this is all super streamlined and super nice, super easy, a beautiful interface, heck of a lot easier to navigate and just make sense of. It's just nowhere near as confusing as some of the cloud hosts providers themselves because Sunrise done all the hard work abstracting it all away to the easy button. But now I can show you even just the reporting section because we've got a little bit more action here. You can see, oh, what's been approved or denied, some of the communication with all of this. And again, seeing those requests, we had the capability to just know what's happening across the cloud ecosystem with whatever org, OU, and anything that we might like within Sunrise. Now I know, I know, sponsored video and all, but seriously, have you ever seen seen anything like this, something just as easy to configure however many things across AWS, GCP, Azure, and just not even need to deal with all the bells and whistles in that environment. Like we literally clicked a button. We clicked maybe three. I think that that is super duper cool to really limit control and actually assess your attack surface and do permissions, protections, security, and zero click protection, principle of least privilege and access control. I think it's so cool. I hope you go take a look. Hope you kick the tires and try it out with the link below, jh.live slash sunrise. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.